Welcome to the Focus Studio. I'm Jay Beaumont, the editor of Greater Port Macquarie Focus, and we're here today with our local member, Rob Oakshot. Welcome to the studio, Rob. Thanks, Jay. Federal politics aside, and I'll get to that a bit later, you've had a lot of big wins for this area. Um, tell us a little bit about it. <sighs> um, two universities coming to town's big. Um, three airports, Kempsey Port Macquarie, Tari, uh, have all got funding and are all in the process of rolling. There's about $30 million of road funding into the Manning, the MBN um, now rolling out uh, in, in the Manning. Uh, the hospitals at Kempsey and Port Macquarie, so that's $190 million of hospital funding. Foreshore Works in Port Macquarie and Taree, they've got $2 million each. Cat Eye Wetlands in the Manning got $2 million and that's a really fantastic project that sits nicely alongside the funding for the Lake Innes reversion uh, project that's currently going on. Um, Pacific Highway funding, um, we brought forward the Port Macquarie to Kempsey section of the Pacific Highway, Kemp the biggest bridge in Australia is just about to be completed. Things like the mental health headspace programs come to town. Do you want me to keep going? <laughs> right. Now, if you, weren't, if you weren't the member, would we have got all that? Well, that's a question for others. Okay. A big, a big item was the Oxley Highway. You know, fantastic road, leads all the way into Port Macquarie, uh, cuts the trip down to four minutes, and it's a beautiful road, and that's something that you were instrumental in getting for the area. Do you feel a bit funny about not being there, cutting a ribbon? <laughs> <laughs> ah, look, it is what it is, you know. I've, it'd be nice to be invited um, to all of these things. Kempsey Bypass is going to open. Um, I don't see an invitation in the intro there. You know, I've got to get clearance before I even walk onto that Port Macquarie Hospital site and it has to go all the way up to Sydney. So, you know, these are local things that um, you've been involved with, you're passionate about, you've got some results on. Change of government in New South Wales, you know, kill oak shot. It is what it is, you've just got to deal with it. OK, on to federal politics. Um, would you concede the fact that some of the um, local members might have been a little bit disillusioned with, um, with you siding with maybe a Labor government? Oh, totally. Um, but I had an advantage that everyone else didn't. Um, we went through a unique period after the, the 2010 election where a handful of us were able to get access to Treasury and Finance and the independent advice of them over that 16-day period um, to tell us, tell us who's promised what, what does it cost, and, and do a compare and contrast. Um, so that was an advantage I had compared to when everyone work, walked into the ballot box. Um, to make some decisions. Um, once I did make the decision, uh, based on some of that advice, um, sure, the politics went pretty rough here for a while, um, and a lot of people's natural allegiances to Labor or Liberal um, all came out of the woodwork. But in the end, I was in a situation where I had to make a judgment call, and as an independent, and a, what I consider to be the representative way, um, that's exactly what you're elected to do, is make judgement calls. Yeah. Um, so I stand by the decision made yeah, and yeah. the outcomes that have come from it. OK. You haven't announced you're running it yet, but assuming you are running, the bookies have you at $10. Should we bet on you? <laughs> that's up to you. Um, I think it's fair to say I'm the underdog, um, even after 15 years in public life. So um, I have no problems uh, being at $10 at all. Um, because anyone who lives here and knows this area well, uh, I think would say, in a two-horse race, that is, uh, well, a two-horse race at the moment, um, uh, potentially, um, that is um, some pretty rough odds. So, by all means, if you want to get your money on, um, I'll keep focused on doing the job. Um, personally, I'm a bit, you know, I don't like betting on politics. I think it's incredibly dangerous and um, a bit of a reflection of some of the stuff that's going on in broader sport at the moment. It's not helpful. <laughs> Yeah. All right, you've been in politics for 16 years. Highs and lows? Highs and lows? Um, mm, the highs are always the projects, you know, they're, they're always the results based projects locally. So, um, and as well, I'd add to that, the, it is a very rare privilege in this business to um, go inside a lot of people's lives, a lot of people's homes, um, and get to have a look and be in a trusted environment where you work on some very personal things at, at, at times. But they're the highs where you can help one person with one particular thing that is their business um, and something they're struggling with. Um, 
lows, look, probably the lows are, um, you know, just the whole walking dartboard thing. I struggle with that. I'm, you know, I know a lot of people um, try and say I love the limelight and blah, blah, but I, it's not a comfortable and natural space for me. Um, and that takes getting used to. And, um, you know, so talk back radio host, tearing your part, you know, you, you never get used to that, and nor do you ask for any of that. Okay, tough question. Your dislike for the National Party is sort of well documented. Um, it was a divorce. <laughs> could you ever see yourself being part of a coalition government in the future? Um, well, look, arguably I'm part of a coalition government now. <laughs> That's the irony of the moment. It's the greatest critics of um, what's going on in this parliament, actually the coalition opposition saying coalition governments are bad. So there's all sorts of irony and weirdness about an argument to rip one lot down to replace it with another coalition. If it's about the Liberal National Party, I can happily work with them. In fact, my principles are in line with many of theirs on things like industrial relations. Um, I would love to see them actually pin their colours to the mask on some productivity gains for the nation. Um, and I think in their heart of hearts, they'd like to. But we've got some lines in the sand that have nothing to do with ideology. They're just about administration in 2013. Um, a market-based response to climate science um, is a line in the sand. Um, I do believe, actually I think it's the liberal and conservative approach, is to believe in a market response uh, to the acknowledged science. Uh, something like the NBN, they're, they're now talking about removing the uniform wholesale price um, to uh, support pricing at a wholesale and retail level in regional areas. So costs for the internet will go up uh, under their watch and I don't fundamentally agree with that. Um, so you know, there are some points of difference. Uh, on how we administer. I don't think they've got anything to do with ideology. And if we can reach some sort of agreement on some basics on do you listen to acknowledged evidence uh, and follow a process then of turning it into legislation? Yes, I do. Um, if they do as well, then we can do some business. Okay, so one of the big ticket items that you've been fundamental in pushing forward is the NBN. Um, How's it all gone? Are you happy with the progress? I mean, it's already slated for Tyree. Uh, when will we have it in Port Macquarie? I've got Mike Quigley coming up in March. So um, he's the CEO of MBN Co and got him coming to Port Macquarie specifically to try and put him in a headlock and help answer that question. Um, we are a, a community that needs it, deserves it and is ready for it uh, as far as an upgrade. Tyree's now underway. Um, Cundletown, Wingham, Chatham are all starting to get the expansion and then the fixed wireless rollout is pretty well happening through the entire community. So some difficult infrastructure decisions about um, location of 30 metre towers are going on in plenty of locations, but they're rolling out now. We're about halfway through that. And then the satellite, interim satellite's on, and there's some members of the community that are already on that with the full satellite rollout in 2015. It's about six to nine months before where we'd like it to be nationally. Um, and I say that as the chair of the MBN committee of the parliament. So there was a lot of regulatory issues with Telstra, Optus and the ACCC to get a lot of technical issues resolved. But they're very much in ramp up mode now. And I think uh, for any Australians who haven't heard about MBN or are a bit cynical, is it ever going to happen? I think you'll see through this year and depending on the results in federal elections, I think you'll see over the next two years um, a substantial uh, growth in the rollout. In fact, that's what they're forecasting and that's what they're doing right now. Okay, so the big question, you might want to answer that there, but are you going to run in the next election? <laughs> I've said I'll make some announcements in the middle of March. It's a quite a genuine process of working it through, so I'm not keeping a secret. That's fine, I won't hold you to it. But um, assuming you are, let's assume you are, um, what sort of message would you give to the electorate about um, you know, going forward, what your plans would be? Oh, results beat insults and you know there's a track record of results in the local area and you know I think the campaign that's going to be running against me if I do run will be one saying you know you don't know what you get with an independent you do know what you get with the nationals and uh, I agree with that you do know what you get it's not much um, there is 60 years that they had an opportunity to really build this area build communities and um, make us a regional leadership location um, I'm happy to match all of that in the four years that uh, we've been trying a different approach to government. Um, we've been very successful in some of the results we've had locally. As well, in the 44th Parliament, I think there's some unfinished business on some national reform issues. You know, it's not just the local. 
So the comprehensive tax reform has to happen. Constitutional recognition of Aboriginal people uh, is going to happen in the next two years. I'd love to be part of that discussion and help drive that one home. Uh, the education policy nationally and really education policy nationally picking up on some of the good stuff we've been doing locally as an example is something that we've had some wins and love to do some more work on. So they're just three national issues where there's plenty of unfinished work and we want to keep driving it. Okay. Right, on to climate change or climate change policy. Yeah. I, I really don't have my head around it and I suppose a lot of people don't. Try and bring it back locally. What are some of the changes we might see? Yeah, the first thing I'd encourage everyone to do is jump on the internet and hit the tax office uh, tax list and see if you can find the word carbon. It doesn't exist. So trying to put to bed some of that mythology that this is a carbon tax uh, would be great. Uh, it is a market and a trading scheme within a market. What's a really good practical example of that locally would probably be the Port Macquarie tip, uh, where uh, it's close over the next five years of being over the uh, 25,000 tonnes per annum emissions. So local council has some decisions to make. They either pay as the consequence of doing nothing and just going over that limit, um, and they have to buy permits out of the scheme uh, based on the market price, or they innovate, and that's exactly what they're doing. The council is now looking at bringing forward a project for methane capture and storage, which gets them away from that 25,000 tonne per annum limit stops them having to pay that premium and in fact allows them to make some money from that capital investment in generating electricity and potentially running um, the TIPS electricity costs. So, you know, um, it brings forward innovation uh, and investment to avoid a price point and having to pay a premium as a consequence. The global good gets served by doing that, uh, but also um, there's some local public good as well because you'll have some cheaper TIP rates. Rob, what's a big project you're working on locally that we might not know a lot about? Uh, in Port Macquarie, the, the testing lab is right next to the sewerage piss, uh, pits, so you can't actually do much testing of uh, things like food and um, safe food. So we're working on trying to move that uh, and get a big upgrade. There's an application for about $4 million in uh, with uh, the federal government on that. Likewise, in Taree, a big project is um, the... Um, an equivalent of a university campus right in the middle of the Taree CBD. So a five to seven million dollar project right in the heart of town to upgrade education facilities there. They're probably two biggies that I'm um, working on and hope to bring home. Okay. Personal question. Mm. Have you enjoyed your time as a member of the locally here in both state and federal? Yeah, Has it look, been enjoyable? Yeah. Obviously had its ups and downs. But oh, yeah. Look, it is an enormous honour um, and um, as an individual, I enjoy politics and I'm passionate about it, and the more I see, um, the more it drags you into it. So there is a bit of an adrenaline junkies um, attraction to this uh, political life. I've got to say, though, um, you know, there are some downsides as well, um, and anyone who might be thinking about going into it, yes, go in hard, but don't go in with your eyes closed. It, um, there's some hard grind involved as well. All right. Well, thanks for spending some time with us in the Focus Studio. We really appreciate it. Yeah, pleasure. Good luck in business.